we are getting close to the end of this series, but we have a few more things to do first before we can consider our template complete. Today we are going to look at how we can add additional layers to our template, so that we can add even more detail to our shows if desired. Let's start off on the edit page. Here we have our initial template covering the siding layers and the garage door of the home. Now, let's add layers to cover the windows and window frames. Start by adding a new video track on the edit page. Simply right-click on the area you see here and select Add Track. Click on the title and rename this Windows or Windows Layer. We've already put in a lot of work on that initial base layer, so let's reuse it for our windows. Select the image that contains our first fusion tree, then copy it using the Ctrl plus C keyboard shortcut or right-click and select Copy. Under the video track's title are a series of controls. When enabled, the auto track selector will determine which video track to apply copy and paste functions. We don't want our copy to overwrite the first video track, so we will disable the control and ensure that it is enabled on our Windows track. Next, paste with Ctrl plus V. This will add a copy of our first fusion tree onto track 2. Of course, it's identical, so nothing has changed. We will edit this in Fusion to start creating our window layer, but I want to point something out real quick. Recall that we can get to Fusion by either right-clicking on the video track or by clicking on the Fusion page icon. If we open it from the Fusion page icon, the top video track will always be the one that gets opened into the Fusion page. Our layout has become a bit of a mess here after our first round of editing. We can reset this by coming up to the Workspace menu and then selecting Reset UI Layout. Feel free to take a moment to add back any panes you prefer to keep open, such as the media pool. Now that we are resituated, let's look at the Clips pane. Click on Clips in the upper left hand corner to open that pane. Here we can see each of the video tracks from the Edit menu, laid out in order. Their track number is designated with V, and then the number. We can see that we currently have Video Track 2 selected, and it is open for editing in the Fusion page. If we select the V1 track, then the first video track opens in the Fusion page. This gives us a way to navigate between our video tracks in Fusion, without having to return to the Edit page. If I disable the Garage Door Tree Limb, and select the other video track, you can now see that these are indeed two different layers, since the Disable only applied to Track 2. Let's go back to the Edit page real quick. Since we reset the UI layout, the Preview pane now has two windows. Let's go back to only one window by selecting this icon, so we can preview our final output as we work. If you don't want to bother with the Clips menu in Fusion, right-click the individual track and select Open in Fusion. This will open that specific track in Fusion for editing. Let's start adding our windows by enabling our map file limb on the Fusion tree. All of the windows on this map appear on the right side of the house only. Recall over the past several videos, we have created a Fusion tree limb for that side of the house, with all of our corner pin filters already in place, so we will want to keep that tree limb. If we had any windows on the left side, we would want to keep that limb as well, but here there are none, so we can freely cut this limb and any others that don't contain a window off of our Fusion tree. To remove the limb, select the underlay, which will select everything contained within it, and hit delete on your keyboard. Continue removing limbs, leaving the right house limb as the only one remaining. When setting up a Fusion tree for my window layers, I like to have a limb for both the window frames and the windows themselves. So, I'll need two tree limbs for that. One way we can do that is by selecting the underlay for the right house Fusion tree limb and copying it. Then move up in the node pane a bit, and paste the copied limb. Connect everything back together in the proper order. Now, rename the underlays in a way that best describes what the limb is used for. To rename the underlay, hold down the Alt key and right-click on the underlay title. Then choose Rename from the menu. If the title of the underlay matches what you already had, rename it. If you find it's asking you to rename all nodes in the underlay, just cancel out and try it again. This happens to me all the time, and it's really annoying. Click off of the underlay, 
and then try the rename step again. Next, we will need to disable or hide our background nodes, so that we can see through to the map file. The simplest way to do that, is to turn off the merge node, where the tree limb connects to the trunk. Extend your underlay out to the right, since you will need the room for additional masking nodes. To start, you can modify your original polygon mask to fit, or you can delete the node and add a new one, either is fine. Using the polygon mask, create a border around your first window. At this point, you can re-enable your background colors if you want while adding your masks, or you can leave that to the end, it's up to you. Select your polygon node from the first window, and copy it. Then, paste it onto the blue line that is connected between the mask node and the merge node. This should automatically connect them, but if it doesn't just connect everything together. With the second masking node selected, drag the corner points onto another window. Repeat this step for each additional window. If you ever have a need to move all your masking points collectively, select the masking node. Then, in the preview pane, click and drag to select all the points of the node. Using your arrow keys, move the masking points in the direction you choose. You can move them faster by holding down the shift key while using your arrow keys. Continue along until you have each window covered. If you want to check for any adjustments that might need to be made, you can reduce the blend value of the merge node connecting the limb to the trunk. This will allow you to see through it while maintaining some of the color. The window frames are complete, so let's create the window glass on the next limb. We can shortcut this a bit by copying all of our window frame masking nodes, and then pasting them into the underlay for our windows tree limb. Let's disable the window frame tree limb, and enable our windows tree limb. This lets us focus on one limb at a time. Change the color of your background if you desire. You'll notice on this map file that I got lazy and did not draw lines to set the borders where the actual window glass will be, so I'm going to have to approximate it for this demo. Ideally, you would have this boundary drawn out on your map file. Select each of the masking nodes, one at a time, and move the corner points for each to line up with the corner points of your windows. These masks should cover the entire glass area. Ignore any window grids or rails for now, we will cover that shortly. Once you have completed all of your windows, re-enable your window frame limb, and disable your map file. We now have just our windows masked on this fusion tree, but we've kept any perspective and stitching filters in place. If we head back to the edit page, we can see what the completed layering for both our windows and siding layers looks like. With this approach, if the scene we are trying to build for our show does not require windows at all, we can disable the track entirely without having to remove anything. But it will always be there as part of the template in case it is needed. We are just about finished with this tutorial, but I do want to show you how you can handle grids and railings on the windows. For that, I'll need to switch to my actual house map. Let's head into the Fusion page and enable the house map. Disable the window frame's tree limb. And enable the window's tree limb. Reduce the blend of the trunk merge node for the window's limb so you can see through it. This map has some lines drawn to represent the window rails which I want to include. Instead of masking another tree limb to handle them, we can subtract them from our window glass masking, which will show the framing underneath. To keep things tidy, we can group our window mask nodes together by selecting all of them and then right clicking on any one of them. Then, select Group from the menu. This will put all of our nodes together in one collection. If we ever need to modify them, we can right-click on the group, and then choose Expand Group from the menu. Now we would be able to delete or modify any of these nodes if we needed. To put them back together, right-click on the group and select Collapse Group. Let's rename this group, Windows Masks. With the group selected, Add a polygon mask node from the toolbar by selecting this icon. Zoom into the preview pane by holding down the control key and using your mouse wheel to zoom in. Draw a mask around the section you want to remove. Our intent is to make anything within the mask disappear.
Once you've connected your mask, open the inspector and change the paint mode for merge to subtract. Add another polygon mask and perform the same step on the next window. Once again, change the paint mode for merge to subtract. Continue on until you have a subtraction mask for each of your windows. With all of those masks complete, let's group them together. Then rename the group to subtraction masks. Don't forget to change the blend value of the trunk merge back to 1, which I clearly forgot to do here. Then, re-enable your window frames limb. And disable your masking file. The window frame layer is now visible, and should we decide to decorate that with a texture in the future, the effect will be shown on the window railings as well. You can perform this trick with any window grids as well, but that will take a lot of time, and personally, my grids aren't important enough to bother with them. Our window layer is now finished, but we have a few more we will want to add to this before we are done with the Jumpstart series. We will cover those in our next video, so until then, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss the final video on how to create a projection mapping template.